Hi y'all, welcome to my workbench. Today I'd like to take you through the quads that I initially got into this hobby with and some of the lessons I learned so that hopefully you don't spend the money or the heartache or the time uh, trying to learn to fly with just inferior equipment. Uh, the first quad I got was an Eosheen Racer 250, also called a Florion 250. Um, I will give this thing credit for being tough as nails. Uh, you know, it's not a terrible learner quad if you really don't know anything about RC or flying. I smashed this thing up good, and I will say it eventually went out of commission because of wrecks, not because of any performance issues. But it's a big porker. It's got weird weight distribution. It's a huge H frame, which means your pitch is tough to tune for. So for a beginner quad, while it can take a beating, it's not a good flyer as far as its engineering and everything. So um, I don't recommend this as a starter. The next one I got was I figured I'd go a little smaller. Um, but again, I went with a, a cheap 180 quad. This is the Yashin Falcon 180. Uh, I went cheap and I got what I paid for. Uh, the performance on this thing was terrible right out of the box. It had no punch. You can't even use that term, punch out. Um, it barely, it was I think 60% or so just to hover. The camera was terrible, blah, blah, blah. But I bought it because I figured it's cheap. I don't mind crashing something cheap. Well, the problem is, is I didn't learn anything from it to get better at flying. So ultimately it was a poor investment. The next one I got was this JJ Pro Battler 130, and my thought was I'll get something small, I'll keep it close and tight, physics will have less of an impact when it falls out of the sky, um, but I kind of bought it because it also looked cool. And uh, it, it had just come out, so there really weren't any reviews, I kind of just, you know, threw a coin up in the air and went for it. And uh, ultimately it was a disappointment. It's very heavy. These motors are, I think, 2,300 kV for such a small quad, and they should be more like a 4,000 or even higher. Um, it's just a heavy porker, and the problem is, uh, on this particular quad, these inner arms are too small, and the propeller goes inside of the body, especially when the top plate is on, which creates this uh, poor ability to get air onto the propellers, and when you come around corners, it drops out like that. It keeps dropping out, and you can't tune it out uh, there are other reviews of this now. I got a bit unlucky on this, I'll admit, uh, and I knew I was taking a risk buying it, but the lesson here is of these three quads, they were all cheap and they all had poor components or they were heavy. Uh, maybe it's cheaper to, to not buy the lighter stuff. I basically came out of that whole experience doing this, this hobby sucks, this is tough. I don't like this. Why do guys like this? Uh, it's really difficult. Well, then I bought, <laughs> And please don't be confused, This is nothing is original on this anymore. But I bought a 210 millimeter King Kong, uh, like a GT something. Uh, it was an almost ready to fly. Put in your receiver and uh, battery and you're good to go. Now that sucker was actually pretty good. It was more in the $150 range, so it was spending a bit more than I had on these other quads. And in doing so, I had a quad that was actually relatively tuned coming out of the shop. Now, I did smash that directly into concrete from about 40 feet up, so it, it, it broke. I moved the components over to this QAV uh, ripoff 210 frame, and ESCs eventually started going. It, again, 150 bucks, you're not getting that good at componentry, so they did start to take some wear and tear. And I was flying it on 4S, which probably really should have been a 3S copter. They're 12 amp ESCs. So there's nothing original left on, on that quad, but this just represents that uh, step in my um, quad history. Now coming off of having that King Kong, I was feeling a lot more confident and I decided, well, I'm going to get me another little small one, but I've seen all these great reviews on this Taro 130. It's already ready to fly. I can fly it around the house and the yard. And I tell you what, this sucker is awesome. If you are going to buy a complete quad or an almost ready to fly quad, and you're a first timer, man, I'd recommend something like this. It's light enough to where when you do crash, it does minimal damage. The props are pretty delicate, but you, know, you just buy a bunch of props. Uh, it flies really well right out of the box. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there to learn tuning on it. Uh, there's a lot of support for it. So far, I've wrecked it quite a bit. Um, I live here on the beach, so I got sand and the motors. They keep getting in there, but it's, it's still flying great. And uh, this quadcopter really, really jumped my confidence level up when it came to 
flying and learning all of my uh, basic acrobatics. Very high recommendation on this if you want a pre-made quad. Ultimately, my final recommendation for anyone getting into this hobby is as painful and as scary as it might be, buy a kit. Get a good kit. Um, this kit here, and I've done other reviews on it, is the Realac X210. On Banggood, as of uh, February 2017, this thing's $112. Now, you do have to put in your own receiver, camera, and transmitter, so there is additional cost, which will probably get you up in the $200 range to get this thing actually up in the air. But you get really good components, and that makes all the difference in the world. Good 30 amp ESCs, motors that are buttery smooth. Um, and as soon as I put this up into the air, even with the basic uh, beta flight, I think it was 3.1 point something, I had it on stock PIDs initially, and my jaw dropped when I put this thing up in the air. I was like, oh, this is how they do it. Ha <laughs> ha! And basically bonking myself on the head, rays of light, light bulb, however you want to describe it. Um, it really clicked once I actually got good components in a good quad. Now, on one hand, it's scary as heck to think about uh, putting one of these together, especially if you're not uh, terrifically good at this, which I have only started to become, uh, I would use proficient as the adjective. Um, the thing about this though they provide nice big tabs if you get good quality kit you build it and then when you break it which you will it's not a matter of if it's it's when then you know how to fix it and that in and of itself is comfortable and adds an extra layer of confidence to your flying though that yeah when I stuff this I just go back to the bench and fix it up so um Hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. I'm going to finish this uh, quick video, well, it's not quick now, but by saying don't be tempted into buying something cheap because you're afraid you're going to crash it. It seems like logic to say I'm not going to throw a $300 thing up into the air because I'm much more comfortable crashing $100 than $300. Well, the problem is you crash a $300 device, if you've gotten the kit version and built it together, it's a learning process to fix build, fix, build, fly, fly, get better. If you buy one of these already ready to fly, you don't know how to fix it, a couple of bad flights and you're done. And your money is not well spent because there is no value in the whole experience that you go through, which kills your confidence, kills your desire to go further into the hobby. You know, you, you all know how human psychology works, basically. So um, please, if there's one thing to take away from this, buy quality. Spend at least 200 bucks if you're going to buy a full-size quad that's already made. Diatone, Shuriken, or Hobby, Hobby Bro. There's a couple of different brands out there that make some quality pre-made stuff, almost ready to fly. But really, the best thing to do is take the plunge, dive in, get a kit, learn how to solder, learn how to build this stuff. You will become um, confident in all aspects of the hobby. Um, plus, man, the first time you fly something you built from scratch or put together from scratch, there's nothing better. I mean, it's like if you ever made a tie to fly and caught a fish on it, I guess probably not many people have done that, but there's that value of I've done this, um, which really adds to the whole uh, experience for me. Thank you all for your time. Uh, please don't waste your money on cheap stuff. Go out there, learn to do it right, and uh, we'll see you up in the air.